Oh, you never change, Lord. He's just wanting us to be receptive. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's all right. You can praise the Lord tonight. You can give him glory. Give him praise. Hallelujah. I worship you, Jesus. You are the Almighty, and there's none like you. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. I give you praise, Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Well, glory to God. Truly, the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. We are grateful for that. Are you grateful for that? I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you tonight. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Our children can be dismissed. Remember, if you want to participate in our uh, Christmas program and uh, on December the 10th, please get with Sister Luisa Jimenez. I'm looking forward to all that is going to take place on that day. Amen. And I love our children. Do you love our children? I love our children. I, I mean, my, as a pastor, what excites you the most is when the children begin to worship. Amen. I, I'm, I'm thankful for everyone that has been delivered from drugs and alcohol and fornication and whoremonging. I'm so thankful that God delivered uh, you from those things. But what really excites me is when our children and our young people begin to get this. And they are not going to have to experience drugs. They're not going to have to experience alcohol. They don't. They, we're going to raise them in truth and righteousness. I love seeing them babies in the altar with tears streaming down their face. Amen. Jonathan, stop me on down the, going down the aisle tonight. Dad, I'm going to go to the altar tonight. I said, well, good deal. You need to be in the altar, son. Amen. He needs to do a lot of repenting. Amen. Praise God. And. I'm excited about what they're learning in Sunday school, and uh, one thing about having children in Sunday school, amen, you, you, you get feedback, amen. I get feedback from, from reliable sources, and my children love coming to Sunday school, and I'm so thankful for the wonderful teachers that we have here at every level of teaching, amen. I do, I do have a burden myself, um, I want to keep Sister Leanne de Haas, um, her stepdad, uh, passed away and they're having service for him on uh, Saturday and his name was Leon Eiselman is that right Eshelman okay so we need to be in prayer for that family and just ask God he had he's been here several times and and I have I've really had a burden uh, for brother Chad Fisher and, and the Fisher family and uh, just want us to keep them in prayer I know that he is uh, working on on getting uh, another kidney and uh, all the things that go along with that. And uh, I know he trusts in the Lord. Um, and he always has a, a comical uh, thing to say. But I do know this about sometimes people use as a, a jest or a comedy to kind of just hide the depression. Because they don't want you to know. You know. And uh, so I just... Let's keep them in prayer. I sincerely ask you to keep them in prayer. And, and my mother and my father, I'm asking you to keep them in prayer. I requested prayer for them last night. Dad has been battling some things in his body. And, then of course, uh, you can't battle chemo or cancer for 12 years and go through chemotherapy and all that without it having a, an effect on your body. 
But I will tell you this, it may have affected her body, uh, but her spirit is strong. Amen. Not saying that, you know, she's not jumping up and down and, 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 and you know, wanting to run, but she's trudging. I love some of the things that have been said over the last few Sundays. It's about the journey. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. Amen. If we live the journey, we're going to make the destination. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so no matter what we go through, you know, when you, when you begin to think like you're having a rough, just realize that there's others out there that, you know, uh, they're, they're battling too. And they're dealing with things too. So let's just keep them in our prayers. Would you please? Thank you. Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. I'm going to talk about holidays. And I'm just going to read two verses to start out, and then I'm going to go further. I won't keep you standing. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feast. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your revelation. Anoint our lips of clay. Anoint our ears to hear. Bring understanding to our mind. We give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Everybody said, in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. I'm going to talk about holidays tonight because I just want to clear up any misunderstandings. I want to talk about the falsehoods um, that many try to parallel with modern day holidays. First of all, um, Moses in the Leviticus wrote concerning the feast of the Lord, the banquets of the Lord, the celebrations of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be Holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath day of rest. And holy convocation, you shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Now, I really think, folks, that we need to work on that one. Now, my father loved the scripture. I tried to tell him about that scripture, Brother Manuel. But he, he goes to the New Testament and tells me, you know, the Lord, you know, one day is not better than another. You can work every day. I agree with you, Brother Myers. There's, you should take a day of rest. That's what that's establishing, is a day of rest. And, um, and now he believes in days of rest, I promise you. But we need to make sure that we take, and, and I love Sundays. I don't know about you, but... I'm thankful for Sunday morning church, and I love Sunday night church. No two services are the same. Amen. You know, I, someone say, well, y'all still doing it the old traditional way or the old-fashioned way. Well, that's fine with me. Amen. I still like Sunday school and teachers going in there. Amen. I, I love what our Sunday mornings have become. I love Brother Bacchus teaching. There's so much word that's being presented and then our worship and then a good move of God and and I'm thankful for that and I love Sunday nights amen we were walking out of the office Sunday night and uh, you know brother brother uh, Phillips and I and, and brother Waddy and some others there and and uh, you know my 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 theme was Sunday nights is let your hair down and let God have his way and let's count bobby pins after after service that's the kind of church your pastor wants to have on Sunday nights. I'd like to have it every service, but I understand God has an order. Amen. Now, we've got to worship him in spirit and in truth. And so God loves spirit, and there's times for spirit, but we've got to stop every once in a while and establish truth. Amen. And that's what Wednesday night brings us to is, is teaching, and, and, and we've got to learn. Everybody say we've got to learn. If you're not learning, you're not growing. And if you're in the same place you were 20 years ago in the Lord, you, you're just, you know, you haven't grown. You're still stunted. You're still dealing with the hang-ups of the past. You're still, and I don't have time to get into it tonight, but it's time to get off the bottle and pull up to the table and get you some meat. Well, praise God. So I love 
Sundays or Sabbath. You know, we, we count that our Sabbath or our, our day to worship the Lord, the first day of the week. These are the feast of the Lord, even holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in their seasons. Now, he begins to go down the list in the 14th day of the first month, even is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of the unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye... Be be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof. Then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And ye shall weigh the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest, priest shall wave it. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenths deals of fine flour mingled with oil an offering made by fire unto the lord for a sweet savor and the drink offering thereof shall be of wine the fourth part of an hen and ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto your god it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings and so he covers the passover amen he covers the feast of the unleavened bread he covers the feast of the uh, first fruits, and uh, he begins to establish these feasts. And I'm not going to bog us down with um, all the different feasts. I'm going to mention them, but each one of them can be taught. And so he is establishing times of celebration. And when you look in, into the, uh, the study of the feast, you have the Passover, the unleavened bread, the first fruits. You have Pentecost, you have the trumpets, the Feast of Trumpets, you have the Day of Atonement, and the Tabernacles. And so, when you, when you study this, these are Jewish holidays. In fact, there's still, uh, many of them are observed today. And so, when you, when you, if you want to do some typology, the Passover is a type of Jesus' death, the unleavened bread is a type of his burial, the first fruits is a type of his resurrection. And Pentecost is a type of the Spirit of God being poured out. Amen. So, I brought all that to our attention and use that as our basis. Because I want to make sure that everyone understands that it's okay to celebrate holidays. It's all right to have a party. It's all right to take a day off of work and to, to, to celebrate. Now, there is not one holiday that we recognize here in our country that was ordained or ordered by God however that does not make them wrong well I'm just teaching a little bit okay amen you can you can get caught up in and one thing that when you get to study in the Word of God and 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 we have several now who are in studying and learning and growing and but one thing I try to always teach because it was taught to me Stay away from rabbit trails. You can demonize everything. Now, I don't know. Some of you may know. Some of you may not. Brother Wilbanks, who's been helping us worship, his wife's uncle was Brother Keith Clark. Now, Brother Keith Clark was a preacher's preacher, and his brother was a good saint of God. And I loved Brother Clark. Brother Clark, get up here and preach. Give one point, and the whole place blow up. He's a spiritual man of God. And, and, and he was the one that walked in the spirit. But Brother Wilbanks was telling Brother Phillips and I a story about how one day Brother Clark and his brother, because there's nobody to keep you humble like family. Well, praise God. 
And he said, they're sitting there, and, and his, Brother Clark's sitting here, and his brother's sitting here, and his brother's trying to eat a burger. And uh, Brother Clark tells his brother, and says, now, bro, there's a demonic spirit right over your left shoulder. And his brother said, Keith, I'm just trying to eat a burger right now. <laughs> and so, and, and now that's comical. But I don't disbelieve that he probably saw some. I've gone in some places, and you can pick them up real quick. You walk into a place, and if there's an unclean spirit there, if you if you got any kind of Holy Ghost at all, it'll. So, um, but we have to be careful that we don't go down rabbit trails, as I call them. You know, we we start spiritualizing things that. Sometimes it's just carnal flesh. We give the devil credit for things that are, aren't really, the, the only devil is, the, is this devil of me. And so, with the Passover, the unleavened bread, the first fruits, they, they had times of celebration. Jesus celebrated. He celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. He celebrated the Passover. He celebrated the Feast of Pentecost. He, he celebrated these things. He even celebrated weddings every once in a while. So, now, everything that we, we celebrate here in this country, there is a history to it. Would you agree with that? Everything's got a history. Amen. None of us, ha you know, have started something. But I'm very cautious when folks start using the word pagan. Because the only person that is a pagan is someone who worships something or someone other than the Lord Jesus. Would you agree with that? If you're worshiping another god, that's pagan worship. If you're worshiping a statue, that's pagan worship. So, so that those things can be considered pagan. If you're worshiping something other than Jesus Christ, that's pagan. And I want to establish that. Now, we all have come to this country from many Many different backgrounds. Correct? I mean, we have lots of different nationalities represented. And the truth of it is, most of us are as, well, I'll just call myself, maybe not you. You know, you, you may be as pure as white driven snow, but I'm just no Heinz 57. My name, my last name tells me I've got some German descent from that part of the world. My mother was a Standridge. So, you know, somewhere along the line, there's probably some, uh, I don't know, Irish or, or, or Scottish. And, and, and then and when my family came here, some of my family, I know I mean, my, my grandparents married a some Cherokee Indian. So I know I've got some Cherokee in me, not enough to get a, a, a card, but where I can get some benefits, but. See, y'all don't understand about that, but I'm from Oklahoma Territory. We know all about the, being part of the five civilized tribes, and we own casinos now. <laughs> right above my father's house, Brother Waddy, is a huge neon sign now where there used to not be one that says Creek Nation Casino. I have the men work for my dad. They'll work hard all week long, make three, $400 and go up there and spin it in a couple of hours. Just a thought. But, but none of, all of us have different DNA in us. In fact, one of the popular things to do now is to go have a DNA test and find out, you know, you know if you want to find out where you come from and what your ethnicity is and, you know, uh, where you... And people are surprised, you know, where some of their ethnicity comes from. And, but, but truly, we're here together. 
We live in this United States of America. And, and we, we all come, for, for whatever reason, the will of the Lord was for all of us to be at this place right here, right now, together. And that's a beautiful thing. We all bring different cultural backgrounds. We all bring different customs. Would you agree with that? And so, um, you know, there is something to that. And so every one of us has influences. We have influences. We have things that influence us. Us being from a smaller town. I know me coming from a small town. Amen. When I moved from a city of about 5,000 to Houston, you talk about a different world. It, I mean, it was fast-paced, from a slow pace to a fast pace. In my hometown, everybody waves at everybody. I catch that around here some. You know, you wave at somebody, they'll wave back at you. That's, that's just good old country folks, you know. And uh, so... There's some shared things. And, and I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. So there are different customs and different cultural things that we have brought into who we are. We also have come into the church through different modes. Would you agree with that? I mean, either you were uh, of this faith or that faith, and, and you had your traditions and things that you grew up doing as a child and uh, so you know or if nothing else it was just the holiday of giving that's what Christmas become people like to dim demonize demonize the Christmas holiday and it kind of concerns me somebody's got a low battery Help them out. They like to demonize Christmas. And I'm going to get into all the different things. And, and I know the history uh, of where they come from with a lot of it. Okay? And we're going to get into that while I'm teaching here tonight. But Christmas at its core is about the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, December 25th is the day that has been set aside socially and culturally as the day to celebrate his birth. There is nowhere in Scripture, the New Testament gives no date, or year for Jesus' birth. And so that day was established by men. By men. Okay? It is not a holy day. Can I, can I get an amen on that? <laughs> it's not a holy day. But it is a, a day for us to stop. Now, one thing I want to throw back to the Feast of the Tabernacle is that the Lord would, would tell them what? I don't want you, I want you to stop, I want you to think, and I want you to not labor, but I want you to give honor. Okay? So for me, and, and the way I believe as, as the pastor of the church, and, and, and just so you can understand, is that we know that that's not the day. And I understand that the day was incorporated, and I'm going to get into that in just a second, from another day of pagan worship. Okay? However, I, as a worshiper of Jesus Christ, I'm going to stop. I'm going to focus on him because it is a time to reflect on his birth and the importance of his birth birth I, I'm not worshiping anything else I'm worshiping him now 
Like I said, we have customs and things that we pull into, and I'm going to get into that a little bit. Romans pagans first introduced the holiday of Saturnalia, a week-long period of lawlessness celebrated between December 17th and 25th. During this period, Roman courts were closed, and Roman law dictated that no one could be punished for damaging property or injuring people before the, during the week-long celebration. And, and so it was uh, a celebration of, of the Lord of Misrule, as they would say. And it was a week-long celebration. So it was not just a, a, a day celebration. It was a week-long celebration and they celebrated being unruly and they it was a time of free love it was a time to go do whatever you want and and so this festival amen was uh you know the pagans worshiped it and there was all kinds of ungodliness that took place and it was not a good thing but when the church and I'm going to pull from Brother Hanscom a little bit. When the sons of God begin to influence the Roman Empire, God began to influence things. God began to move on things. And we, now, just through what he taught us, we know that that time period, people were used to festivities and the church, you know, as an answer to these festivities, set aside that day to recognize the birth of Jesus. And it progressed through the Catholic Church as a teaching. And the thing that comes to pass, or, or the thing that happens is, is people begin to teach things as doctrine. And they did that. The Catholic Church, any of you that came from the Catholic Church, they, they'll tell you that's the day he was born. That is not the day he was born. I don't know the day he was born. One thing I do know, that he was born. <laughs> and that's the main thing. Amen. People laugh at me and my family because we don't start celebrating uh, what you call Christmas. And the birth of Jesus, we, we start celebrating like in October into November and we get excited and, and uh, because it's a time of giving and people treat each other better. And people are more thankful. And you know, when you look at each of the holidays, I mean, when you go for a job interview, you know, you, what holidays you want off, right? Each holiday represents something that's important. Memorial Day, Labor Day, even Easter, many times is misrepresented. Okay? So, with, with, with Christmas, you have a date that's been established. And it was passed down from generation to generation to generation to generation. And so, those that were pagan worshipers, many times would... Uh, bring in their own types of uh, uh, additions to the worship because as Catholicism began to spread and Christianity began to spread, people are changing. People are converting. Now, you know and I know that you still have customs. You still have culture. And all these things influence our holidays. Would you agree with that? I don't know about you. There's some traditions that, that you know, you pass down to generation to generation. And, and, uh, and, and you, it's a family thing. I mean, someone tell me something that, that you think is something that represented of you at Christmas time. Your culture, your background. Anybody? Tamales. Thank you, sister. Now, I found out that, what, what did Mark tell you? Oh, I won't say that. 
Everybody has something to unwrap on Christmas. You got tamales. <laughs> but <laughs> Is that what he told you? Yeah. And I tell you what, as much as I like tamales, just give me the tamales. I'll be happy. I can unwrap them. Amen. And, and you know, there's desserts. I mean, it's like when I was a kid, every Christmas, my mother made this cookie Christmas tree. That was about three foot tall. That, you know, that, and, and she covered it in green frost and then put like Skittles and M&Ms all over it. And that was a tradition. We helped mom do that. And so I know that each of us have different things that, that we do, right? right? Amen. And so uh, one of the big things that people get into an argument about Christmas, you know, is, well, we're not going to put up a Christmas tree. It's, it's pagan. Well, and, and they go to the scripture where it talks about going into the groves and cutting down the trees and making idols. Study that out. They're talking about making the goddess Astarte which is the predecessor to Diane and, and, and Venus. And, and she was a, it, was a, it was taking and making an image. Uh, uh, she was the goddess of fertility and, and sensuality. And they would put, them in, put those little goddesses in front of the big god that they were worshiping because they wanted her to bless their homes and their families. That's pagan worship. I don't approve of that. If you go out and you cut down a tree and you make it into an go ungodly image and you put it in front of your home and, 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 and you worship her, then I've got an issue with that. That is pagan worship. But I'm going to ask a question. How many of you got plants in your house? Flowers. You don't have to be scared. How many of you got a vine in your house that you wish wasn't there? How many of you got candles in your house? I love candles. I love the smell of candles. I just, I go in my office, and now they make them with wood wick where they pop and crackle like you got a fireplace. And they're just wonderful. I just, I just love them. And so, you could easily preach against candles in the house. Do you know where they got their beginning? I mean, if somebody changes the tone of their voice and, and, and sincerely says, do you know where the candles got their beginning? In the wax. That's right. Candles got their beginning in the wax. Or perhaps the tallow. And I won't go there, but they used to make candles out of tallow. I mean, you can, you can you, see what I'm talking about? You can get off on a tangent. But when you, and, and so, yes, there, if there is people worshiping, there's always going to be people doing good and people doing bad. There are those of us tonight worshiping Jesus, but there are still people out there worshiping Satan. Sure. Wizards and, war, and, they, and they're trying to tap into the spiritual world. And they're going to tap into more than they want to. Amen. I love sitting around a fire. I got a big fire ring in my backyard. I don't know what tractor it came off of, but I love it. It's a big old tractor tire rim. I can build big fires in that thing. That doesn't mean I'm going to, when I build a fire, I'm going to offer up worship to some untrue God and so so many times we want to focus on the negative see the devil he works in the negative and, and, and in this in the in the you know he that's where he dwells and that's why negativity you should rebuke it out of your house sure see the dark side always see the dark side no 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 I'm gonna see the light I didn't even know that there was an issue with Christmas trees till I, till I come to Houston and went to Bible college. And one guy came from a church where he, you know, his pastor strongly believed, don't you have a Christmas tree because that's worshiping the tree or worshiping, you know. And, and so 
uh, he, we just, you know, well, you do what you want to do, and we're, you know, you're okay. And I do believe that. If you have an issue and you have a conviction, you don't have to do. All right, that, that's when you and God. But I want to make sure you make your decisions based off of truth, not just some tangent rabbit trail. I feel as a pastor, that's what I need to do. I got to give direction. Got to give clarity. And there was some time in the past where this was kind of getting muddled and, and people were getting confused and, and it was messing with them. But a Christmas tree is nothing more than a decoration. And when you study history, most times they would bring in an evergreen type tree, especially folks that lived in northern Europe during the middle of winter. Why? Because all they had was snow and ice and bleakness. And we have a lot of green around here throughout the year. But if you go north and, you know, it's, it's bleak. Very, now, the fall colors in the mountains were very beautiful. But in the wintertime, there is no leaves on the tree. You know, snow on the ground. And after a few days of just seeing white, after, you know, there's people who really lost their mind. So what would they do to, to create a festive spirit? Well, I'm going to bring some green in the house. And so, you bring in a tree at that time, and it's, it creates a festive spirit. Everybody gets to feeling, hey, this is, this is a nice time of year. And so, I don't celebrate a day. I don't recognize it as the day his, of his birth. But because culturally, socially, we've set that aside to recognize it, I'm not going to let the wor world out-worship the one I worship every day. Amen. And so, sure, I put up a Christmas tree. I like to decorate it. I like to put a star at the top of the tree or an angel and tell my children about the star that led the wise men or the angels that told the shepherds about Jesus' coming. This is a time of year when we can really tell the story of Jesus. And I feel like when we let the world pressure us, I don't say happy holidays. I say happy Thanksgiving and I say Merry Christmas. And I really like to say happy birthday Jesus. Amen. <laughs> because I want to honor him. I want to honor him. So in most, most people, most customs, decorating a Christmas tree to liven up the home. Amen. If you, if you go to my parents' home, you're going to see a tree, a big tree. And, and, and they like to put the tinsel up all across the things, and they like to liven up the home. And, and they, my mother loves to decorate the house for the Christmas season, and, and there's nothing better than everybody getting together and, and having a good time celebrating. And, and we celebrate it on Christmas Eve. I, I'm thankful. Hallelujah for parents like that. <laughs> We open gifts on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We always, we always ate hot dogs and chili and just, a, you know, just some fun food and had lots of desserts and had to wait for Grandma to get there. You know, and it had to be dark. But then we had a celebration of family and giving because that's what it's all about. For God so loved the world that he gave and he is a good father. He gave to us. So I as a good father want to give good gifts to my children. I do it because I love them. Because I want them to know. Amen. And it's constantly a reminder of what the story is. And that's what people. Amen. Need to focus on. It's about the story. It's not about Black Friday. That can be a part of the fun. It's not evil. It's not bad. Okay, it's just merchants saying, hey, I can make a lot of money. But even now, but what the world misses out on is when you start bleeding into, it, it, Black Friday doesn't mean what it used to mean. People don't get as excited as they used to because now, now they're doing it on Thursday, so it doesn't mean anything anymore. So, you know, our holidays, we have to make sure we keep the main thing the main thing. Thanksgiving should be about being thankful. What we're thankful for. How blessed we are. 
being with family and we have to make sure that even in the midst of this busy season right now i know this is just teaching tonight and we're not hey we shouted and worshiped earlier that's when you should have done it if you wanted to do it that was the time to do it the lord knew i was just going to get up here and teach on a subject that's not popular sometimes so we bring into our homes these these uh traditions and things we pass down and and uh, i don't know about you but i get me a piece of mistletoe and wait till i catch sister bumgarner busy and, and then i'll walk in there and put the mistletoe over her head and say come on give me a kiss <laughs> Now, I know that you can demonize that and you can say, well, you know, droids use that to make poison and this. I don't know what they did with it. I know what I do with it. I grab it and I pick it up and I take it over and put it over Sister Bumgarner's head and say, hey, this is a tradition that I learned about. I want to do it. <laughs> well, praise God. So, you know, I, and the thing is, is if, are, you, are you full of the Holy Ghost? If you're full of the Holy Ghost, then if you're touching it, you're sanctifying it. Brother Bumgarner, if a man owned a bar, came and paid you tithes, would you take it? Absolutely. Well, that was money spent at a bar. That's right. The devil had it long enough. True words have never been spoken. <laughs> he and I had a very similar conversation. But the truth of it is, is that they may have used it for bad, but when I get a hold of it, I say, Lord, thank you for this. Bless it. I've just sanctified it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, if God spoke to me and said, don't you touch that. It's unclean. I'm going to say, yes, sir. But I do believe that God can bless us, and if we take it and bless, ask, thank Him, we sanctify it. Well, praise God. So, and you know, people get into um, Santa Claus. We'll talk about Santa Claus. You know, I'm going to look, make sure there's no real little ears in here. Good. Now, if you study that, then you know there was a bishop born of a wealthy family whose name was Nicholas. And he was a very wealthy individual. He wasn't right in everything, but he did have a penance for the the poor and the downtrodden he was a, he was there to to help them and he gave his fortune to help them and a lot of our stories our myths they come from something like that so it was a story passed down from generation to generation it was passed down from uh, you know, one family to the next, and then uh, people begin to draw pictures of him, and they begin to identify him as Saint Nicholas, and from that he became Santa Claus. Coca-Cola, Amen, uh, contracted a commercial artist to create a Coke drinking Santa, and a lot of the modern day Santa Clauses come from that imagery, and you know. Somewhere along the line, Harper's Weekly back in the 1800s gave him a home at the North Pole with a workshop filled with elves. And, you know, it becomes, now it's a make-believe story. But when you look at the, 
the gist of what it's all about is it's you know Santa Claus gives to you know he's watching his list and he's checking it twice he's going to make sure sure and if you've been good brother Myers if you're good you'll get something in your stocking but if you've been bad you're going to get nothing but a chunk of coal now that's great for for little kids and they they love that and in it and and but when they get to a certain age, what happens? <laughs> Caleb, what happens when at a certain age, you realize something, don't you? I hope you've realized it. When they start, you going to write Santa, Santa a letter? No, Dad, I'm going to tell you. But it's, it's about doing good. And, and, and the world, I mean, they, they spend billions of dollars trying to promote this ideal of, of doing good and, and the miracle. And, and at Christmas time, there's this miracle. And you know what? There really is. Uh, I feel like God blesses it. He says, you know what? I want you to understand there is a season that you can worship what I did. Because I love the world so much. I gave you this child. And the story of, of Mary and Joseph and, and in, the, in the inn and, and in the stable. I mean, it's a story that needs to be told. And so, so many times, the world, especially those uh, of an atheist background, first they'll tell us that Christmas is a lie. And I know where the word Christmas comes from. Christ Mass, I get that. But to me, Christmas represents Jesus' birth. So they will tell you that first it's a lie because of the date. And then they want to tell you that they want to bring in all the, the pagan. And, and they can get you so confused that you don't feel proper celebrating. And I want to make something very clear. It is okay. It's okay to celebrate the birth of Jesus on December 25th. Because that is a day we as a culture and as a people in this country have set aside to recognize the day of Jesus' birth. It's okay. It's okay to decorate your home. It's okay. It's okay to put up a Christmas tree. I'm going to put up a Christmas tree. People say, well, you, you might go to hell. No, I'm not going to hell. Because I understand what the Scripture's talking about. And you need to understand what the Scripture's talking about. I don't put up idols in my home. But I have let in a flower or two. I have put a plant or two in the house, okay? Against my will. It's all right to put lights. When I was a kid growing up, my father worked for this family, a, a teacher and a gentleman that was uh, retired from working in the military. And on one tree... They put over 10,000 lights on one magnolia tree. It took us a whole month to decorate their yard. My father took Santa Claus and the reindeer. You've seen some of the plastic ones, Brother Myers. And, and he, he took uh, the stuff you put in concrete. What do you call that? Uh, rebar. And he put them up. And, they, and Santa Claus come out of the sky. Coming down on top of their chimney. They had no well, no well on one end. They had, I mean, they had, when you go to my house, I have some characters that, that was made for a merry-go-round. They, I'm talking, but people came from miles and miles and miles to see their house in my little town. But right in the center of that whole yard lit up, there was a stable. And there was Mary. And there was Joseph. 
And there was baby Jesus. And there was the wise men. And there was the shepherds. And they had it all laid out. And it was, they put a lot of money into it. But that's not wrong. Because in their way, they were sharing the message of Jesus' birth. And I wanted to teach this because we're, we're going into a, a time of the year when we ought to be sharing this message more than ever before. This is a time for us to witness more than... You can make, a, a, you can make cookies, put them in a canister, take them to somebody and say, I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas. It's thinking about you this year. We're, you know, just celebrating the time of year. And I just wanted to give you some cookies. My address is 3420 Klein Road. My doctor will not like you. But we can just, we could, our witness, and that's what I'm going to end up on. What is your witness? What does it say to somebody who has been raised in perhaps a, another faith, another denomination, and they talk to us, and they're, and they're like, well, are you enjoying, oh, I don't worship Christmas. I don't celebrate Christmas. Then, they're, then a red flag goes up, and they're like, you don't worship the birth of Jesus? And then, then you're like, you, you want to come to church with me? And in the back of their mind, they're like, uh, I don't ever want to go somewhere where they don't celebrate the birth of Jesus. And so I, I laid out for you the truth about, about a lot of things tonight. Knowing their origin. But you know what? Above all, it's what you make it. If you want to make it a pagan worship, you can make it a pagan worship. But if you want to make Jesus the center of it all, then you can make Jesus the center of all. There are so many lessons to be taught. So many things to be taught from one generation to the next generation. I hope that on that day you tell the story. I hope on that day you, you talk about how Mary and Joseph, and we will around here for the whole month. At one point, I'll have all my kids around me in this church, and I'm going to tell them the story about the birth of Jesus. I'm excited about that. I got a whole new idea for it, sister. And so, I, I get excited when we hear songs like, Away in a Manger. No crib for a bed. We don't sing it all throughout the year. My favorite Christmas song is Oh Holy Night. It's a great one. Oh, I, I mean, I, I got a whole playlist, sister, but I, I like Christmas music. I like, it just puts, it makes me festive. Some people say it depresses you, but it makes me festive. I just... And when certain singers, there's two singers that sing. David Phelps is one of them. And Mariah Carey, Lord help her, save her, in Jesus' name, amen. But when she sings that song, her true purpose comes to life. Because <laughs> God gives you gifts to worship Him. But when she hits that last note of, O oh, night divine, my, sometimes I want to shout. Praise God. Because when I think about it, can you just imagine what it would have been like to, to have been there? So we talk about him throughout the year, but we really don't recognize that day or, or the happenings or the whole story until this time of year. So what are you going to do? I'm going to be a witness. People come to my house. Man, y'all really like Christmas around here. Oh, I love Christmas. I love the birth of Jesus. It's the best time of the year to talk about his birth. Man. And so, I'm going to encourage you as your pastor. If you have a question about these things, come talk to pastor. 
That's why the Lord put me in your life. And can I just be blunt and hopefully not hurt anybody's feelings? Other people can say, well, brother so-and-so said, that's all right, brother so-and-so can be wrong. They can be wrong. So be careful what voices you listen to. If I read my Bible, the Bible tells me that the sheep know the voice of their shepherd. And he doesn't lead them astray. But he leads me beside still waters. He takes me to green pastures. And so as an under-shepherd, I say, okay, Lord, where are we going today? Because if I'm, if I'm a good under-shepherd, I'm looking for green pastures. I'm looking for still waters. I want to take the people of God to places where they can get fed, where they can get nourished, and they can grow. Praise God. So when we get caught up in all the confusion, that's what the, what the devil likes to do. He likes to plant confusion. So my objective tonight... I'll just be truthful, was to clarify, especially Christmas. Because if you're not going to celebrate Christmas, don't celebrate New Year's. Do not say Happy New Year. You're being a hypocrite. Don't say Happy Birthday. Don't, t don't give a month for your birthday. Don't say you were born in March. Because March was created by a pagan. January was created by a pagan. February was created by a pagan. Now, with that all said, if you have convictions, I respect those convictions. If you feel like, I still don't want to do that, Pastor, I'm not telling you to, to do anything. I'm not telling you have to do anything. I'm just telling you, please... Be careful. Remember what Brother Backus taught this past Sunday. 1 Corinthians. Or 1 Corinthians the 10th chapter. When he's talking about. Don't let these things be an offense. Don't, don't let. Hey. If that's what somebody wants to do. Bless them. If you don't want to do it. That's fine. But I can tell you this. Been around a long time. And my folks have been around a long time. And never once have we bowed a knee to a Christmas tree. Amen. Except for to shake the present. That's right. But I wasn't worried about the tree. I just worried what was in the package. But you know what? Above all, it's a time of just being blessed. And I'm encouraging you, be blessed this season. Be thankful for the birth of Jesus and share his goodness. Share, give, give. It's not giving Tuesday. It's giving every day. You know why? Because he gave to me. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's stand to our feet tonight. I hope this helps somebody. I know this was just teaching. I hope it wasn't boring. I hope it helped you. But I felt as the pastor and shepherd of this church, I wanted to bring clarity. Amen. I, I, I celebrate holidays. Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day. I'll celebrate another day if you want me to. Amen. You say, Pastor, I'm celebrating such and such date. I'm having a little thing at my house. I'll be there. Amen. Why? Because we, celebrating is good. Taking a time off to be thankful. Taking time off. To remember the birth of you. Take it. It's just good. It's just good. Lord Jesus. I know everything is not a shout and a run. But we've had that a little bit tonight too. And Lord we're coming into a time of the year. That has become very commercialized. And yet Lord. There is at the core of it still. I believe Lord. A meaning much deeper. And that is. The gift of love that your heavenly father Lord gave to each of us in thy birth as a man.
who would come to this world to die, to die to set us free from our sins. But I celebrate your coming tonight, Lord, through this time and season. I thank you, Lord, for understanding. I thank you, Lord, for truth. And I thank you, Lord, that we can take and make this season, this time of year, our very own. We don't have to make it what the world wants it to be, but we can make it what a true apostolic Holy Ghost filled person would want it to be. And I thank you for that. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to bless everyone that's in this congregation. Help us to make sure we understand and know you for who you are. And we praise you for that tonight. In Jesus' name. Can the church say amen? amen. God bless.